Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here again. Today I'm going to be talking about hydroids in the dwarf seahorse tank. And this topic is inspired by Dominion. Thank you, Dominion. He had just recently purchased some wild caught dwarf seahorses and ended up with hydroids. This is going to be a two part series and today we're going to talk a little bit about what hydroids are and where they come from. First of all, hydroids are a type of jellyfish more or less. So they do have the ability to sting and they're very harmful in a dwarf seahorse tank. They sting adults and definitely kill babies. I have seen even in one state of hydroids, they form cottony looking like patches in corners of an aquarium, capture brine, become pink colored, and dwarf seahorses pick out the brine that's trapped and inadvertently they end up swallowing pieces of the hydroid and then expelling them. So I can only imagine that's very painful for them to have those stinging creatures go through their digestive system. Another state is the medusa form or what we know is the jellyfish form. And you can see them here swimming around. This tank has a high level of infestation. They were reproduce pretty quickly, especially in a dwarf seahorse tank because newly hatched brine shrimp is the perfect food for them. They thrive on them and grow very fast in numbers. Now, an interesting thing about hydroids, they do occur naturally in the ocean. And if you have any other kind of marine tank, even large seahorses, you probably have hydroids, but you never see them or notice them because they never get the opportunity to really grow and reproduce. They just don't get the kind of food supply that they need like they do in a dwarf seahorse tank. Some typical ways that hydroids make their way into a marine aquarium are through live rock, which is probably loaded with all kinds of creatures, including hydroids, macroalgae, or marine plants. Also, even dwarf seahorses themselves or other animals that come from the ocean can introduce hydroids. If you start with an aquarium that is clean, hasn't been used in a while, and acquire captive bred dwarf seahorses, you can still end up with hydroids in your dwarf seahorse tank through a couple of different methods. If you happen to have other marine aquariums, as I mentioned already, those hydroids are already naturally in there even though you probably don't see them and they're not a nuisance. Because the hydroid eggs are so tiny, they're microscopic, even one accidental introduction drop of water from another tank or even a piece of equipment that was used in another tank and then somehow ends up in the dwarf seahorse tank is enough to get a population of hydroids going. Now there are some theories that hydroid eggs do lay dormant in brine shrimp eggs. I'm not really sure if that's true. I have not had scientific proof of that. There are a lot of anecdotes that people say there was no other way hydroids could have gotten into their tanks. I don't really know that I've had hydroids come from brine shrimp eggs or not. The people who breed seahorses for a living in facilities, they claim that that is just a wives tale or a misunderstanding. It is not accurate. Again, I'm not sure, but supposedly when you hatch brine shrimp, you should rinse it with cool water because supposedly that cool water kills any hydroids that might be lurking in the hatch. Again, I don't know if that's true. I always rinse my brine shrimp no matter what, just because I like to get off any extra bacteria just for the health of the dwarf seahorse tank. 
Some people recommend getting decapsulated brine shrimp or decapsulating it yourself for just such a theory and prevent hydrides from being produced in a dwarf seahorse aquarium. But again, do what works for you. I just hatch my own brine shrimp and I have not had problems with hydroids and I have captive bred seahorses. I do recommend if you are thinking about acquiring wild caught dwarf seahorses, even if they are maintained or have been raised in tanks for a while, please treat your tank there are very good chances that the seahorses or the water that they come in are going to have some invisible hydroid eggs and once they're given that perfect environment lots of brine shrimp and a closed system they're going to have a population explosion well that is it for this video in part two i'm going to talk about how to treat for hydroids or the ones that i'm familiar with or are found more commonly in aquariums and in dwarf seahorse tanks so stay tuned for part two thanks for the topic again dominion and i will see you next time thanks for watching